Part C actually asks us to expand this to all three T tests that I need to run. So what this is doing is it's taking that um, tree and adding an extra set of branches to it. So let me kind of draw you what I mean. What we're saying is, is that the first test is not significant and that's 95% of the time, or it's significant, which is 5% of the time. Then we're gonna run that second T test and it's gonna be not significant 95% of the time. It's gonna be significant 5% of the time. Then we're gonna run it a third time, not significant 95% of the time, significant 5% of the time. And what ends up happening here is we end up with a pretty big tree diagram. So we finished it off, significant. Now we need to mirror this, not significant, significant, 0 0.95, 0 0.05, not significant, significant, 0 0.95, 0 0.05, not significant, 0 0.95, significant, 0 0.05. So this first branch here is three not significant tests. The second one is two not, one yes. This one right here is two no's, one yes. This one here is one no, two yeses. This one here is two no's, one yes. This one here is one no, two yeses. This is one no, two yeses. And this one right here is three yeses. So then it's asking you, what is again the probability of getting at least one? Again, at least one, and at least one literally is all of those guys. That's at least one. So again, easiest way to get this, figure out what this is, take it out of one. So since they're independent, I multiply those three numbers together. So it's 0.95 cubed. And what ends up happening, flipping back over, is when I do not and not and not, I get 0 0.857375. At least one significant is one minus. Now you could have gone through and figured out every one of those other branches and added them all up a little bit more work, but it says that my probability here is 0 0.142625.